Two of the most talked about skills for 2.4 have been Fist of the Heavens and Holy Fire, the first because of how powerful it is with the expansion to damaging demons, especially since it becomes this powerful with only 40 points invested, and the other because of its potency through the use of Double Dragon and the Hand of Justice combination for a passive aura with several bonuses scaling it to a fairly decent level. This build takes advantage of these two setups being relatively affordable point-wise and makes it into a beast that can farm pretty much anywhere it wants using charge for mobility, holy bolt for boss kills, and its extraordinary crowd control on the important farming player counts to maximize drops. Now, this is an endgame version of the build, only possible with already high-end items, but it is easily adapted from a more basic Fist of the Heaven Smiter for our initial farming, since many of the item choices outside of the Holy Fire gear are pretty much just overlapped between the two builds. Starting with our stats, we go with the fairly bog-standard Paladin stat distribution. Enough strength for gear, enough dexterity to maximize block with Holy Shield active, and the rest into vitality, since we will have a Meditation Mercenary to give us that nice mana buffer to keep us topped off with Fist of the Heavens. Wearing that Insight weapon for Meditation is going to either be an Act 2 Mercenary, in this case I prefer Holy Freeze for slowing enemies down and making life, well, generally safer, or an Act 1 Mercenary of whichever flavor you prefer. Personally, since we are getting close to enemies, I would lean towards Cold for this as well, especially since we already deal plenty of fire damage with the Double Dragon setup. As far as the Mercenary's non-Inside gear, I went with Gyoms and Fortitude for boosting damage output, though more budget choices like Treachery or Guardian Angel for armor and leech helmets of your choice will work just fine as well, and actually make the mercenary tankier in the face of danger. Also, if using an Act 1 mercenary, Giant Skull can be an amazing option as well thanks to his knockback keeping enemies at bay. Skill-wise, it's actually fairly straightforward, but you do have some choices to go with. The three most important skills, though, are going to be Fist of the Heavens and Holy Bolt to maximize the damage output of your active attack, since their synergies are the most important part, and in the defensive tree, you will go with Resist Fire to maximize the Holy Fire aura damage. The reason we don't worry about the lightning synergies for Fist of the Heavens is that for PVM, you uses, the lightning damage is going to be insufficient on the skill, which means we want to rely on the magic damage from the holy bolts and the fire damage from our aura. Combining that with Conviction as our active aura for this hybrid build will help that Holy Fire damage get extra punchy, and you'll want your Conviction at level 25 with your Holy Fire weapon swap to cap it out at 150% resist reduction. Your last choice though is whether you want to invest points into raising your Holy Shield level to improve durability and to save points on dexterity, or whether you instead want to invest into Salvation to improve your fire damage output from Holy Fire. Both work fine, and you should generally just choose the one based on your preferred playstyle, whether it's more aggressive or more defensive. In terms of equipment, we've already hinted at a few of them, with the dual dragons being in the name of the build itself. This will make up our armor and our shield choices, each of them granting us level 14 holy fire, each, like I said, a handful of attributes and defense, and some striking and struck effects that can be fun on the side. We supplement these two items with even more holy fire through the use of Hand of Justice, in this case, in a phase blade. This gives us 16 more levels of holy fire, bringing it to a grand total of 34, as well as providing us a lot of handy bonuses from reduced enemy fire resist for after we break resist, all the way to some useful tools in case we have to fight some things with charge, for example, such as leech, ignore target defense, extra physical damage, target freezing, blinding, and deadly strike, making it fairly nice. And in a phase blade with the increased attack speed, if you use it with smite, it will be plenty fast enough. The rest of our gear, however, is leaning very much towards Fist of the Heavens aspects on the build, with Harlequin Crest for plus skills and a bit of magic find, our caster amulet for, well, more plus skills and faster cast, Stones of Jordan in both our ring slots for plus skills and extra mana, as well as Arachnid's Mesh on the belt for most of the above, all of these being fairly standard caster fare at the high end. On the gloves, I went with Mage Fist here, mostly because I'm still in the process of converting my Go Mule over to 2.4 from 2.3, and this is what I had available to me, but it's also fairly handy for your mana regen if your mercenary is a little squishier and gets taken down in a pinch. Train Ghouls, on the other hand, is another option and will generally be preferred since they provide you with resists as well as the faster cast that you find on this item. On the boots, I went with War Travelers for a pinch of extra magic find because I am using this guy for a farming project since he's a fairly solid character for going anywhere I I will need quickly, and I wanted a minimum amount of magic find on him for this project. On the charms, as you probably expect, Torch and Annihilus are here. And for PVM, I'm not too worried about having mediocre resist since this guy plays like a late game Path of Exile character, fast and spammy, taking everything down fairly quick. 
So we ended up going with Lion's Branded Grand Charms to boost the Fist of the Heavens even more. For hardcore or more safety driven players, you will just probably want to stick with Resist Charms here instead so that you'd have maxed out Resist on both swaps since Dragon kind of sucks for Resist. And we are positive with this, but it's not a lot. On the weapon swap, I do have Heart of the Oak for plus skills and casting speed, and a Spirit Shield for even more plus skills and casting speed. This basically gives us a stronger option for casting Fist of the Heavens and spamming Holy Bolt faster. Though it's not entirely necessary, it does help out. You will likely have these if you are farming with a Plain Fist of the Heavens prior to switching to this more expensive build, but if you don't, it's still fine. You could also just use pre-buff gear here, because on swap, that's where you're going to usually keep it, and you can get yourself some battle orders and such going with just call to arms and a spirit shield to give you just more durability, since you will be doing enough damage to most things even without the caster swap I have here. Now in terms of being able to do this as a budget build, since that question will come up. Unfortunately, due to how the mechanics work with the holy damage auras, this is not really possible to this degree at least. This is due to how stacking of these damage auras works in regard to having multiple pieces of equipment on your character. In terms of similarly effective budget builds, you instead would want to lean either into a Fist of the Heavens with Blessed Hammer hybrid, or a Fist of the Heavens melee hybrid such as our Fist of the Heavens smiter that you see on screen now. Right next to this special thanks for all the channel members and patrons that make this content possible. So keep gaming, have fun, peace out, this has been Alzrath. bye.